All right, party people, welcome to a new tutorial. Today, I want to talk to you about um, the layout of how to set up your keys in Resolve in a little bit of a different way. All right. So the usual way you would set up your keys, and that's what I've uh, been seeing all over the place or how you would set up your workflow is you would have some kind of output LUT. No, it's not about that today, but some people do this. Um, and then you would maybe have some parallel nodes or actually you would probably do something like that. And then you would set up something like, you know, primary balance and uh, th th those would be like your secondaries and then maybe you, you add another one like output or whatever you want to do. And this would be like your look and then you could do a post look and maybe maybe you want to do something like uh my mouse. there you go maybe you want to do something like that or you have a little bit more stuff going on behind the look all right so usually you would start with this and then you would go like hey let's let's key the skin tones of our cow so it maybe go into here key the skin tones then you would say okay i want to also work on the grass awesome so let's just you know pull up or pull them down we want to have a dark cow and then here I'm just going to mess with this a little bit. Maybe actually work on that key a little bit more. No, let's just key stuff out that we don't want. Put stuff back in. Yeah, it's not very pretty, but it, you know, maybe does the job that we need to. And then maybe you also want to like key the sky using the 3D key. Cool. Very nice. And then you might want to just kick that down. All right. Beautiful. All right. Now, the client comes in and it's like, hey, let's make everything warmer. You could now say, okay, I have my output grade so I could make everything warmer here. Fair enough. That works. But maybe you've already dialed in stuff here. And as you can see, once we mess with the primary balance here, if we want to do that, then everything breaks. Why does everything break? Why does all the keys sort of go crazy? because we're changing the input the key is looking at, right? So if we mess before we do anything with the keys, and this kind of, you know, just goes exponentially worse if you have another key here, because your client is like, hey, I like the lot, a lot, but maybe my CI color red needs to be changed. So you, you maybe key, it, key the grass again, right? You're gonna run into problems super quick because if you do this and then change something here, yeah, that's not a great idea, is it? No. Okay, let's just reset it and show you a little bit of a different way. A way that I learned in uh, compositing. So in compositing, it's very normal to keep your, your keys and your rotos completely separate from your comp node tree and just kind of merge it in when you need it. And that's exactly what we will set up right now. So what I like to do is I like to pull out a... Um, now why does this still look so broken? Let's see. Oh, here we go. Okay, I just reset everything. Actually, I just delete it. Here we go. All right, cool. So we'll set up the same sort of node tree again, but this time we're gonna have a completely separate branch, right? This is our image branch. It goes from the green to the green, all right? And this will be our uh, keying branch. So I'm gonna call this like pre-key. So what we wanna do pre-key is just apply like a regular 709 LUT. Now this doesn't always apply, it depends on your source footage, uh, but I find that most keyers in Resolve are actually made to work best on Rec. 709. Now when you're in a color management, color managed project that might be different, you know, so pick your own way. But I'm just showing you, we can now transform the image to Rec. 709 in here and then do a key on Rec. 709 without, you know, degrading the image in any way. So we'll do the same, we'll key the skin tones again or the, the, the cow skin or whatever you want to call it. It's a cow skin like that. Okay, that looks good. And now we're going to just pipe that key into the alpha of a different node. So now this node is working on this image that comes out of the primary, but it's taking the key from here. So if we change the primary now, I can just demonstrate this. So we'll just go and, I don't know, change the hue to pink. And now if we change the luminance, of the primary balance, the key stays, right? Because we keyed it down here. This doesn't change if we change this, right? This pipes into here. Okay, that's super cool. 
So now we can do we can do more keys and you can just do you know create parallel nodes and just delete this stuff if you want to. Um, or you can just make a normal corrector node and hook it up here. And uh, you know we can just do the same. We can key the the grass. Cool. Awesome. And then you can clean this a little bit. Let's have a look. All right, cool. Delete this stuff. Looks nice. And then, you know, I'll, I'm just going to call it grass because if we copy this grade later to like a different uh, different shot or whatever, we know what the keys are for, right? And we have a logical separation between keying and everything else. And you could have an assistant work on the keys while you do all the rest. So that's super cool. Um, cow skin maybe. Uh, and then let's say we also want this guy. We might want this guy, we might want to pull it down just to key it a little bit better. That sometimes helps, it doesn't always, but it, it can help. So let's say I knock this down and you just want to have a really nice way of keying this guy. And this except this especially helps the AI keyer because all the AI tools that you find are usually trained on Rec. 709. So they work better in Rec. 709. So let's say you have like an AI speed warp or a um, AI depth mat or whatever magic mask stuff you want to use. It usually works better in uh, Rec. 709 or in like some SDR, uh, you know, something, whatever. And so we can pre-key this uh, and then like key this guy here. Super good. And then we can just pipe that in and call it, you know, sky. And uh, this one will will do. We'll do a cow magic mask as well. So why not? We'll go into here. This is the new Resolve 20 magic mask tool. And you know, you can see we're working on the Rec. 709 image. So it's going to select the cow, have it do its thing. It's not very fast in the Resolve 20. Okay. So we got the cow in here and it's set to faster just because we don't want to waste so much time. And I only have a uh, 4060 in this uh, streaming PC or recording PC, so it's uh, not very fast. But All right, so now we have the cow uh, magic mask as well and it looks pretty okay. It's nice, it's not flickering too much. That's a pretty good result for the fast option, pretty good. And then we're gonna throw that in here and uh, maybe put this guy in here. And then um, let's see, we need the grass too. So let's add one more parallel note and just add the grass to here. So this looks a little bit messy right now, um, but it really isn't, if that makes sense, because now we have everything separate. So if you want to do something like change the grass back here, we can just use the same grass mat as we have. And nothing you do here at all affects that key. So that key will stay. Um, another thing is that you can do if you have very noisy footage, it might be a, you know, a really good idea to denoise pre-keying. However, um, you might not want to denoise your image. So um, where is it? It's not called deet something anymore. Anyhow, we'll use we'll use this one. It's the new beta. I think they changed some stuff. Um, so you could do denoise operation here, and cache that too. So you could cache that denoise without it affecting anything else. Just denoising pre key, All right? So that's super good. And um, yeah, let me just demo this a little bit more. So we, we can do a bunch of stuff. We can change the hue hue of this and. Um, uh, we could do the sky here and just pull that down and do all kinds of other stuff. And uh, when we change the primary, the correction just stays, right? It doesn't, it doesn't break, which is the big difference. And um, what we can also do is we can obviously copy paste this grade right, to some other shot. And what the only thing we have to do is, oh, we go into the cow skin, okay. We know this one has a different skin, so we'll key that cow skin, uh, and then the, the, I'm not gonna do this again because it takes forever, but you could now like magic mask the key. Okay, well, it's, magic masks are still a little bit, you know, whatever. Um, let's see. No. Yeah, it's, it's better. Anyhow, you could do this, and then you could, the grass key actually seems to work, and then you have a sky key that actually seems to work. So, then you can copy stuff a little bit better uh, and you have the uh, 
you know, the grass down here and whatever else you want to do. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can combine them pretty easily. So you can add a node called a, uh, for example, a key mixer. It's made to mix keys, right? So you could take the cow skin um, and the cow and the grass. Let's add, an, let's add one more input. Okay. Uh, we can add the grass and we can take a look at it. And now we're adding uh, all these mats together. But we could say like, hey, let's, you know, maybe subtract the cow skin because we don't we don't want the cow skin in here. So uh, you can do you can do a bunch of stuff. Um, I honestly always get confused with these buttons. They make me completely crazy. But you can you can invert keys that come in. You can change them. You can change the whole output and like invert stuff. Um, this is basically some math to just mix your keys in a different way. So you can create whatever math you want and sort of, you know, create this if you want to or not, uh, you know, whatever you want to do. Uh, like for example, you can't pull a sky key, but you have a very good magic mask of this and the floor. Then, um, if you just mix them up, right, you take the cow and you take the grass and then you just kind of go and invert it and then you have a sky mat more or less. Right. Um, you can, so you can do a bunch of this kind of stuff. Super good. Uh, you can create holdout mats as well. So, uh, let, let's say we just can't grab a good area of this grass because there's some other pieces in there that aren't green. It's t completely fine because we can just make a new like polygon curve like that. So you can do this with all kind of mask outputs. We'll just track it. Okay. All right. Now we can just extend it real quick. Right? And we could use that in our layer mix as well. So we can just add that node. Uh, uh, I mean, add one input. And then add this as our input. And then you can see how they all get combined super nicely. And then we could use this as our sky mat if we can't grab the sky for whatever reason. Or you might want to use this as for the uh, sky replacement uh, thing imaging, right? You could do that as well. So you could do a uh, artificial sky, turn that on, boom. Right, and you can tweak that as much as you want. Super cool stuff. Um, so yeah, that's really it. Um, I hope you like this. I hope this is of use to you. I know it looks a little bit crazy, but I'm a crazy compositor, so for me this all makes total sense to combine keys and, and have the keys completely uh, separate. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this, and uh, I'll see you next time.